made it back just in time. I had to go turn the air on because it's getting hot with all these lights I have on in here and uh, getting ready to heat up my stuff. So today is organized chaos day, people. It is going to be organized chaos cooking. Uh, one, I haven't had the coffee yet. You can see the pot is still full back there. So the mouth and the brain are not synchronized yet. Pardon me if I babble. Um, I'm going to actually come up with something new I have not tried before, but I'm pretty sure it'll work. Most of my ideas do. I'm an A plus B equals C cook. If A tastes good and B tastes good, usually you can combine the two and C will taste good as well. It works most of the time. I'm not going to say all the time, but I haven't had it fail me yet. So, um, chicken pot pie, if you've watched my previous video for quick and easy chicken pot pie, basically I used keep my ingredients together sorry this is like third take people um, this is great value but any biscuit that you want these are the eight in a can pop the little dough out throw it onto your tray to bake um, I will take one of those generally is how I normally do it take one of those flatten it out to a little disc shape put that into a muffin cup where it's hanging over like a muffin pan so it's hanging over you know the sides of the cup and then I scoop in my chicken pot pie mixture and I would take the top of the dough that's hanging out and pinch it across the top to seal it. I don't have a muffin pan over here. Somebody did pack it. And all my things are back at my kitchen. This is JC's kitchen. So that's next. My second idea was gonna be to do the same process with the dough, flatten it out, put the mixture in the center, put a second dough on top and pinch it all the way around the edges with my fingertips. That'll work. However, I came up with something more innovative and I want to try it because I'm really curious. I use a Bella brand backwards pass. Sorry, I wasn't ready. Take three. <laughs> I use a Bella brand waffle iron and I got it at Walmart. It is like $18.99. Super cheap, but it works fabulous. I've been using this thing for well over a year's worth of waffles. Sorry, I'm leaning. Um, and it was like $18.99 at Walmart. Basically very simple to use. You plug it in. That red power light comes on to show you that the power's on. Then it turns green. When it turns green, it's ready for you to put your first waffle in, your mix. You open it up, spray it lightly, put your waffle mix in. Do not overfill. I aim for pouring in the center two thirds and because when you close it, it's gonna spread. So I usually aim for like a two quarters, two thirds, three quarter kind of thing. You don't want it to be crazy. And then you close it and flip it. And then this is gonna take about three to four minutes or so, usually per waffle, and that green light there will pop on to let you know it's ready. It even says the word ready. I promise it does. So it's very quick and easy. You just flip it back over, open it up, get your waffle up. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside for the moment. <clears throat> and the reason I'm bringing that up is because I am going to make chicken pot pie waffles today, people. This has been on my brain for the last like 10 days. I just have not made it yet because over here I'm in such a routine of getting up and making breakfast and I make something different every meal and every breakfast that when I have been making waffles I've been using like coconut waffles, cinnamon waffles, banana brown sugar waffles, um, strawberry waffles. I've been making everything under the sun but this and to me this is more like a lunch or a dinner thing. Now I eat any meal any time of the day. Y'all know who I'm talking about those people that do the same. So um it is what it is. He had to go run errands. It is only quarter till 11 a.m. right now. It doesn't matter because by the time he gets back, this will be done and so will the video. So um, today is going to be cooking with organized chaos, people. I don't have my glasses on. My vision is organized chaos right now. Uh, I don't have my hand did, so I just pulled it back and pulled this down. That's organized chaos. I have yet to get in my coffee and you know how much I love my coffee. And you see the pot is still full. And here I am about to stir it in my recycled McDonald's cup with a butter knife. Okay, it is organized chaos, but it works. Sometimes crazy gives you good results, people. Don't hate. So really quickly, here's the ingredients. For the chicken pot pie mixture, no matter how you're gonna make it in the muffin cups like I explained, if you're gonna do the little patty thing like I explained, or if you're gonna do it with the waffles today, the mix is gonna be the same. I'm going to use John Soul's oven roasted chicken chunks. They do come in other flavors. They come in long strips as well, but either way, these are chunks about yay big. I'm gonna go ahead and mince these suckers up because I want the chicken to be very small throughout the waffle. I'm going to use uh, two cans of veg all, which basically is like a uh, 
peas, carrots, green beans, celery, potato kind of mixture. And then I'm going to use a one can of condensed cream of mushroom soup. You can use cream of chicken soup if you prefer. I've used both. Um, you can use whatever cream type soup you want. It's your palate. You have to like it at the end of the day. So that's what I'm working with today, people. And um, just work with me. Come with me. Come with me. Work with me. And if you wait patiently, I promise you, you will see. What can I say? I'm in that kind of mood today. It's just craziness. Okay, I have finished um, dicing up my chicken very tiny, and I have come up with a new plan, people. I explained this in the other waffle video. Um, I think it was in the pancake video, actually, about the cranberry orange pancakes that I just did a couple days ago. Um, in the waffle iron, because when you're pouring, you don't always get the same amount of ingredients in all quadrants. Um, if I have something heavy, like say raisins or some fruit, um, in this case, it's gonna be the chicken. I will pour the batter in and add that ingredient by hand. So I've minced up the chicken and it's not as much as I thought I was gonna have. So, which is fine because it's more than enough for two waffles and that's really all I need to make right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the waffles just like I described them, except I'm gonna hold this chicken back and I'm gonna sprinkle it in. Once I pour the batter into the waffle iron, I'm gonna quickly sprinkle chicken in all four areas to make sure there's chicken in there. Now, I would prefer it goes into the batter, so if you have enough chicken, which I thought I did and I don't, told you it's cooking with chaos today, gotta work with what I got, people. Um, if I had had enough, I would've put all of this diced up chicken into the batter and the vegetables, as I explained, and that cream of soup. And then I would have taken more chicken and either put big fried chicken, uh, you know, fried chicken patties on top, uh, grilled chicken patties on top, chicken tenders on top. There's lots of varieties of what you can do with it. And then just drizzle some more of the chicken pot pie mix over like a gravy. Or also didn't fry this yesterday is the chicken gravy. Um, there's jars of chicken gravy or turkey gravy at your local store and I was gonna actually use that to go across the top so there's no maple syrup going on these waffles per se you can do it if you wanna but I'm just saying so that's where I'm at uh, basically right now I'm doing my second cup of my waffle mix um, powder mix so there's my two cups of that now my second little sheet that I'm gonna do and it helps Jen when you don't put crap in front of the camera all right I've got my veg all can already opened I'm gonna go ahead and just hold the lid shut I've got ghosts in here um, and I'm gonna, there's a gnat and he's really bugging me. <laughs> Sorry, it's Florida, can I say? Um, I'm supposed to be doing, per the instructions on the back, two cups of waffle mix for, uh, I'm blind, one and a half cups of water. My water is going to be, as I suggested the other day in that other video, to use whatever liquid came with your fruit. Not syrupy stuff, but liquid stuff. Now, veg all is sitting basically in water that's been keeping these vegetables hydrated. So basically this water is going to have more vegetable flavor to it. So for the one and a half cups, I'm gonna go ahead and just pour whatever I got from my can here. And this one has come to probably just over half a cup. And I've got my second can here opened also. I apologize, this video is gonna be a little longer than I'm trying to keep them short but I really can't when I have something involved like this. All right, so I have a whole cup, and they said one and a half cups of water. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that one cup in there. I'm gonna run over here and get a half a cup of water. Here's my other half. And keep in mind, I'm adding my full can, it's pretty thick, huh? Of my of cream of mushroom is what I chose to use today. You can use cream of anything else. They have, um, well, I'm not sure all the ones they have, but I know they do. I don't know, recommend the seafood, like a bisque or something, but they do have like cream of mushroom, cream of chicken. So those two are my staples when I do anything with chicken pot pie. And you can always vary it. You can use turkey instead of chicken. You can leave the meat out totally and just make it a vegan meal. Um, it all works, people. So. My butter knife has now graduated from stirring my coffee to stirring this. I'm kidding, I just used it to scrape out that pan of, or the cup, <laughs> the can, I can't talk. All right, so I have in now my water from my veg all, the two cups of the waffle pancake mix, and I have put in the extra half 
cup of water, you know. And I've got um, my chicken here, which I would normally dump all in there, stir it up. It's going to be way too thick for the waffle iron. At that point, I need to add more water to see what it looks like. But first, I am going to lightly season this. I'm not adding any salt because any canned vegetables and processed chicken stuff tends to have a lot of sodium in it. So by eye, I'm just putting some black pepper. Regular old black pepper, people. And garlic always helps bring out the flavor when using savory meats and things. So I'm gonna throw some garlic in there. And that will be it for that. So now I am going to go ahead and dump in one can of my veg oil. I'm gonna to explain to you what I'm gonna do next. Because now is when I'm gonna to need to eyeball it. So I'm going to stir this with a whisk and I shall be right back to show you the thickness and how I'm going to fix it. Okay, glorious update. Guess what? When I put in the one can of cream of mushroom, the full can of veg all, I have the other one still here, and uh, mixed it up with what I had the liquid from the can, which was one cup of watery liquid from both cans as well as that half a cup of water I took from the sink, it actually made the waffle batter the perfect consistency. And I shall show you, so I don't have to add any more water. See that? Now, no, never mind the chunks, but the actual liquid part. If you can see it moving around in your bowl pretty easily, sliding from side to side, not watery, but it's just like moves pretty well, like a medium thickness, you are good to go, people. You don't want it as thick as your, say, condensed cream of mushroom whatever cream of chicken soup was. That's way too thick. Um, so it needs to be between that and being watery. So we are good to go, people. I'm actually going to um, kind of improvise here. I am going to go ahead and dump in most of the chicken that I have here. I'm going to go ahead and mix that in. And then I am going to... Sorry, I changed my angle. I'm going to go ahead and mix that in. And then I am going to go ahead and heat up this Bella waffle iron and be ready to show you guys how I'm going to cook this sucker and what it looks like when it's done. So I actually withheld just a teeny bit of chicken to use as a garnish that's going to go on top of the waffles. Um, because generally, like I said, my plated finished presentation, I love to make sure things look nice when I hand them out to people shouldn't just taste good I think it should look good my plate can look like duty and I don't care because I know it's gonna still taste good but I want it to look right for whoever I'm cooking for so I withheld some chicken on the side here I'm gonna finish the waffles out put some more of the um, chicken pot pie veggies and um, on top of it just sprinkled across the top like a garnish with the chicken so it's just gonna be an additional thing to eat along with it and if I had a can or a jar of chicken gravy or a packet, if you prefer to mix it yourself, I would go ahead and just drizzle that all the way back and forth across and make that the sweetness. And that's what I'm going to send JC on an errand to do now that I just thought about that to myself. You see how ideas just come to me while I'm cooking. I shall return when the waffle iron is ready to work. I got a phone call to make. All right, I got a duck down and low down mode here, y'all, so I could precariously balance my laptop at the edge of the stove with the non-existent tiny counter next to it because the waffle iron cord is very short <laughs> and this is the only place I can plug it and still film decently so um, I actually have uh, the laptop very close this is gonna get very hot so I'm kind of angling everything hopefully it works out so as I told you before when you first plug it in the red light is gonna come on that shows you the power is on as soon as it's heated up to the appropriate temperature, it is going to pop on a green light, which is going to let me know I can put in my first waffle. So that's what I'm waiting on. Come on, green light. Green light. There we go. So now it is at the right temperature and it's going to do this between every set of waffles if anybody runs out and gets this particular waffle maker. Uh, once you make a waffle, then flip it and, you know, put one in. I'll show you in a second. You flip it, it gives you the ready light, you turn it back over, open it, take your waffle out. You're gonna wanna close that pan back down again and make sure you have both lights on that it's heated itself back to the appropriate temperature. Then spray it really quick and put your next batter batch in for your next waffle. So, try to go ahead and do this and it is gonna smoke, I can tell you why, because I just used it earlier. So, I'm 
probably got some oil on there from earlier. So I'm just using basically canola oil. I used it in many videos. Great value, cheap and easy. I'm gonna lightly spray here, lightly spray here. Hopefully my laptop didn't suffer too much on that because it is right here. <laughs> it is right there. All right, and another thing with waffles, if you've got a lot of ingredients in here like I do, because you can see this batter is very chunky, um, I like to go ahead and make sure you stir it up before every pour. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use my whisk here to kind of scoop some down. Keep in mind, we have some big chunks in here. Okay, I'm gonna rotate it just a little to get the batter to slide that way, and this way, and back that way. Now I did put chicken into the batter, so I'm not gonna add it right now, but if I were going to add it, I would just take some and sprinkle it all the way around to make sure every section gets it. Close the waffle iron and turn it. So let me clean my hand really quickly. All right, now that green light was on when I first flipped it, and now you see the light has gone off. So in about three to four minutes, that green light is gonna come back on simply flip the handle to turn it right back over to open it. If you see that it looks too light golden or you touch it and it's too mushy for you, just close it and leave it for another minute. Open it back up. It's very, very simple. I love the waffle iron people. It makes the easiest breakfast meals and now dinner and lunch meals. We'll be back in three minutes. Alrighty, uh, just another tip on waffle irons. I don't know if you can see all that steamage going on right there coming out in all different directions. That's just the actual heat causing it to, you know, basically just make steam. Um, that's part of how the machine tells when it has the moisture content down low enough to actually pop that green light on and tell you it's ready. It's high tech, I don't know. I don't need to know. As long as it works, people, that's all I need to know. But generally, you are gonna see steam. I can smell already that it smells actually like I'm making biscuits and right now it smells really good. But um, basically, it's don't worry about the steam. Smoke, bad. <laughs> steam, not a problem. It normally does this even when you're making regular waffles, Belgian waffles in here. Uh, still waiting on the green light. Alrighty, green light just popped. There it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. See, I still got some steam coming out of there. And there is my first waffle. And as you can see, it is very soft. It's nice and crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. So I'm just gonna move it over. I had a plate sitting here ready and waiting. Gonna close that down. I still have both lights. Just wanna make sure they both stay on. Sometimes they'll be on and when you close it, then it'll go back off to heat up a little more. But it is staying on, so I'm gonna go ahead and lightly spray. Sorry, laptop. In the danger zone. Stir up my batter again, just like I did before. I'm going to kind of push it in there because it's chunky. It's got a good pour that first time too. I didn't even end up with it like overflowing everywhere. This Bella um, waffle iron does come with a like a little disc thing that you're supposed to set it on to help catch any overspill, which happens a lot if you overflow it a little too much, you know, overfill it rather too much. So I've got that spread out nicely and there's the flip. Also, this one has a pretty cool handle thing that folds. So if you have like a short cabinet, like a lot of the ones here, you don't have to worry about the, not being able to fit it in a cabinet because that handle keeps it out of the way. So I really like this waffle iron. Go Bella. So uh, that first waffle took about three and a half minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, wait for the second one to be done. And then I am going to come back and show you the finished plate. All right, folks, I decided to go ahead and finish out all of my batter making all my waffles, and I currently have on low, keeping it warm in the oven, uh, let's see, two, three, I can't count, three, four, five, and six. And this was the instructions for like the medium amount of waffles to make. Um, actually, it doesn't even tell you on the box. For pancakes, it gives you this little chart. But it doesn't say waffles is down here. It just tells you a straight standard amount. So if you find you don't have enough, just add more powder, add a little more water until you have enough to make as many as you need. And this is what happens when you overfill the waffle iron. It has dripped all kinds of everywhere. It is uh, even on the bottom down here, but it's okay. It's the very last waffle and I have a bad habit of making, I'm going to make all this batter fit in here. It's going to fit. I do it every time. My fault. 
It's all right. Got a little cleanup to do afterwards. We'll get on that cleanup on aisle one. But I will be back. I'm um, waiting on JC to show up with that gravy so I can go ahead and properly plate this and show you a nice presentation. Okay, I am finally back and ready to plate. Hopefully my timer is working. There we go. Um, so basically there are three here. As you can see, you can see some of the veggies in there in the middle. So I am going to go ahead and as I said earlier, I have heated up the other veg all can. I'm just going to sprinkle some veggies across the top here, nothing fancy. Not too many because obviously I put plenty in the batter. Just a decoration. And by no means a professional plater, people. I just try to make this look pretty and make it work. So there we go. That'll work for that. Dropped a pea. And then I'm going to just take some of that chicken that I talked about. Well, actually, I'm going to do the gravy first. Um, I went ahead and um, JC was nice enough to stop and get the gravy that I was talking about. So I'm just using this jarred gravy. This is Heinz. Uh, you can use any brand you like. I have already heated it in the microwave and it is quite toasty, I assure you. So I'm going to just drizzle this across the top like so. No particular pattern, just enough to make it look nice. Um, you may want to put some gravy on the side if you have, you know, people that are going to be sitting at a family dining situation. And then I am going to go ahead and last up, end with sprinkling some chicken. Now remember I already put chicken into the batter so it does have chicken inside as well. And that's it people. That is a finished gorgeous plate right there. Let me straighten this up. It's a little bit messy but it's all right. It works. So that is Wacky Waffles with Jen. Chicken pot pie waffles. Um, I had the idea like I said for quite a while now and I am sure it is going to be awesome. So this is his plate. I got to get on right now. But thank you for watching. Hopefully this is helpful to give you an idea for a unique family recipe or just to dine on your own. Just take all the ingredients down by half and that'll still give you leftovers. Uh, like and subscribe and thank you again.